Central Section soccer action. Say that fast three times. We have East High facing Foothill High at a neutral location, South High, based on the fact that Foothill's home field is being renovated. I am Kenny Calvin. I'm joined by my producer director, Dr. Julian Wilson. And we are live here at Kern High Network Sports. I want to thank our sponsors at Valley Strong Credit Union, Motor City GMC Lexus, and Bakersfield College. And we're off. Kicked over to the left fullback. Controlled by Foothill, and now East High making a play for it. Stolen and controlled by the left winger. Over to the middle backer who gets it across to the attacking backer now controlled by East High. Left winger. Try into the top of the box and that's gonna be controlled by the goalkeeper. We'll get you some numbers when we can. Free kick controlled and out across midfield. Header action. Controlled by East High. Foothill with some great opportunity, getting it up to the left winger once again. Now he's at the top of the box, inside the box for the first time. It's Foothill and great defense by East. Control established once again, and the try is high and good. Amazing shot. It looked like it was Andres Meza. From about 30 feet, and yes, it was Andres Meza with the amazing shot from about 30 feet or 30 yards. Amazing action right off the bat by Foothill. Wow, a minute in, we get our first goal, and it just like Dr. J said, it's going to be a high-paced, action-packed game. Crowd went wild as well as Foothill scored their first goal. Double header, triple header, <laughs> and we finally get a foot on the ball by Foothill over to their left winger. Oh, huge contact. So Foothill, they've had an interesting run at it as the one seed. They faced Washington Union, beat them 2-1. to one. Then they went on to face Roosevelt, beat them 4-2. to two. And now they face East High, the 13th seed. East High has had an uphill battle and has done well. They faced San Joaquin Memorial. The fourth seed and came away with the upset, five to three. Then they went on to face the five seed, Miramonte, and got away with a two nothing shutout to get them here. And now another try <clears throat> by Isaac Cordoza, and that's controlled, and the free kick is out to East High. Foothill controlling the majority of the action through the first three minutes. Nice defense there by number four for East High. We don't have a four on the roster. It would be nice to get someone to communicate to us who number four is for the East High Blades. Nice action by the left winger. And now we have a tackle, and that's going to be a free kick opportunity, our first free kick. For Foothill, coming from just outside the box. And we have Andres Meza over in the free kick area. He's joined by, it looks like, number 13, maybe, Isaac Cardoza. Cardoza with the pass inside, and now it's another goal! Foothill coming out, ready for action. Amazing pass from the outside. 
Didn't see who scored the goal, but that was an amazing pass inside the box. Wow. Talk about some heavy action in the first four minutes, Dr. J. Wow. Foothill coming out like they mean business. East High playing shocked. Hasn't had many opportunities on their own end of the field, and now Foothill right back at it. Jorge Cruz getting control before it's kicked over to Mesa. And another try almost trickled in and almost a disaster by the East High goalkeeper, and he's getting a workout in this first four minutes. <laughs> Well, hey, Dr. J, you know when we come together to do a broadcast, it's always action. <laughs> East High struggling a little bit right now. I know I may be peeking for our viewers, but I'm sorry. When I get excited, there's no volume that can contain me. Mesa getting it across. Header out of the box. Foothill definitely playing like a number one seed in this first five minutes of action. Now they get it up to the attacking backer. Oh, and now it looks like we're going to have another free kick opportunity, and this Foothill crowd has traveled well to the south side. South side, yeah. Free kick about 10 yards outside of the box. Amazing setup on the last free kick for the goal. We want to thank everyone at the Kern Schools or the Kern High School District. It's going to take me a minute to get Kern Schools out of my system since they are now Valley Strong Credit Union. So now Foothill is setting up. For the free kick, you have Mesa about 10 yards outside of the box and a nice pass inside and it's good off of the East High Blade and the Foothill fans are going wow, wow. Talk about a first quarter of action, seven minutes in and we have three goals already. That one was so forceful. It went off the head of an East High blade. Kenny, you're going to have to tell me what's going on. I, all the <laughs> games we've ever done, we've never seen a game like this. Wow, we, this is an amazing game. And I always joke with sports fans because, yes, I'm a traditional football guy, but I played eight sports. Soccer is the one sport that I didn't have a chance to play organized in fashion. So, always... Enjoying the opportunity to expand my comfort zone and call games outside of my regular comfort zone. And soccer has been phenomenal over the past three weeks. And what action we have in this first quarter. Foothill in total control. Up 3 nothing over East. And they get it out to the left winger again. He's been active. Shia Clayton is the left winger, number 12. Oh, and a nice play by East High. Finally getting some action on their side of the field. Nice pass. Oh, a little physical action. They're getting physical. Pass in and controlled by Foothill. Kind of confusingly as it looked like it went off of Foothill. Well, I got to tell you, Foothill's doing a great job being physical and controlling the game from the onset. Aaron Fabella, wonder if he's related to the great Daniel Fabella of Foothill lore. Kicked out, and control will be to Foothill. So, we talked about the brackets. Touched on East High, they had an uphill battle the whole way. Many people feel like they got lucky to get this far. And it kind of seems that way as the number one seed is handling them through the first nine and a half minutes. Foothill 
putting on a display that will make the great Joey Porter proud in the all black. <laughs> in this Foothill fan base travel well. The noise you hear is all them. A nice pass inside the box, but that'll be controlled by the goalkeeper. East High and Coach Ronald Leva hoping to get some control and get some kind of action on their side of the field as the majority of the first period so far has been played on my left side, not my right side, as I stand right at the center field line. Picked up by the right winger. He skips it across. Goes over to the left. Left winger into the attacking backer, and he loses control. East High aimlessly hoping to get it across the line and loses control again, and that will be controlled by the left winger. Okay, and these are now into the midfield attacker who, lose, who loses control. Amazing defense by Foothill. Continuing to put the pressure on one-on-one. -on -one. Now we have a stop in play, and that's going to be controlled to Foothill as the East High Blade lost his footing. 3 nothing with 28-43 to play in the first. I am Kenny Calvin, joined by Dr. Julian Wilson. We are here at South High School for East High versus Foothill. East High, the 13th seed, facing Foothill, who will be the home team as the one seed. Here at the neutral location, South High, due to the renovations being held at the great Ned Perminter Field. And if you ask the great Ned Perminter who's one of his biggest headaches, his name will be Kenny Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Never lost a game to Foothill. We had some classic battles, Dr. J. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get to see you. Well, the first battle, we faced the great Rashawn Sheehy, mm -hmm. coach at Bakersfield High. When he was a Trojan, we faced them in front of 27,000 at Bakersfield College. They were up 14-3. We came back and won 16-14. The next year, we faced Joey Porter in a super stout offense with Phillip Brown and a few other guys, and we beat them 47-7 in front of 35,000 at Bakersfield College. Man, those sound like some good days. Those were the days. Back to soccer action. You know, I'm going to give some foothill praise. I'm not going to just kick you guys while you're down. <laughs> I'm going to give foothill Trojans some praise. My mom was a foothill Trojan. Wow. They're coming off a state championship basketball win last year. Pass inside, header, defended, and out of the box by East High. Nice positioning by Foothill, and control will go to East High. So with the stoppage in play, this gives us an opportunity to see a substitution for East High. And then it gives us an opportunity to see the formation that they'll be in. Looks like they may be going with a 3-4-4. Control to Foothill across center midfield. Controlled by the left fullback, and that'll be blasted all the way up. And he has one blade. Best opportunity to threaten for East High before that kick back across center midfield. Ball headed over to midfield, and now it's going to be kicked over to the left. Up to the left winger and the midfield attacker. He's going to kick back. Nice pass inside the box. And that's going to be offside. Control back to East High. 
So the winner of this contest will move on to face the winner of Lamore versus Highland. Lamore, the three seed, facing Highland, the two seed. Lamore had an interesting run as they faced Templeton. Then Porterville. They beat Templeton 3 to 1, Porterville 3 to nothing. Highland beat 15 C Morrill Bay 4 to nothing before going on and defeating Mission Oak 2 1. But back to the present action. East High trying to threaten has not had great opportunities in their own end of the field. Most of the game has been spent on the Foothill side of the field, and that's going to be out and controlled by Foothill. I want to shout out the Achieve Magazine. I want to thank all of our sponsors who placed ads. Foothill with their greatest opportunity and loses it. And control goes back to Foothill. Best opportunity for East High in their first try is no good. Controlled by the goalkeeper. Nice opportunity to get some kind of shot attempt as they have not been on their end of the field much at all. Control back to the goalkeeper for East High. Gives us an opportunity to thank the South High principal, Connie Grumling, and her administration for accommodating the Kern High Networks broadcast tonight. We thank you guys for being so welcoming. Nice defense, and now we have a try that's blocked. Pass inside, no good. Controlled outside of the box and kicked out by East High. We have a couple numbers for the East High Blaze that are not on the roster. Definitely want to do my best to highlight the athletes as they are in live game action. But there are a couple of numbers that are missing from the East High roster. One being number four and the other being number 25. So if we can get that information... We'll definitely highlight the athletes' accomplishments. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this student section for Foothill is going wild. They have not stopped talking since they came in. Shot into the box. And kicked out by Foothill. Great attempt and pass by the left fullback of East High. And now controlled by the center back. He gets it all the way over to the right fullback who gets it up to the right winger. First time the right winger has had some successful action getting the ball up. And now they lose control once again. Attempting to get the ball to Diego Murillo. East High loses control, and control goes back over to Foothill before they lose control. And right beneath me, you see number 25. Definitely wish I had his number because he's been one of the more active blades on the field. Active again, getting another try inside the box. Good hustle out there by the East High blades. Nonetheless, it'll be controlled Foothill. 21-11 remaining to play in the first period. Foothill Trojans up 3 nothing on some amazing scores. We have one from as far as 30 yards out, one coming off a free kick pass inside, and another that went off of an East High Blade head into the, in, into the goal. See, I'm trying to shake that football out of me. I almost said the end zone. <laughs> East High will control with the free kick. That'll be taken by the center back. Number 17. 
David Puga, one of the captains for the East High Blades. East High hoping to get some kind of shot. With the depth that they're getting with 20 minutes in, halfway through the first period. Now it's up and controlled by the left winger. He gets it up to the center field attacker, the center back. The center midfielder, I should say. Now he gets it over to the right winger. Forces it up. Defended very well by East High, and they're going to get it back out across midfield before it's controlled by the attacking middle backer who gets it up. Oh, nice pass attempt, and now two-on-one opportunity. Oh, and another shot inside, and it's good. Foothill is on fire. Oh, my goodness. Foothill Trojans up. For nothing on some amazing footwork and action. Amazing passes as well. The one seed definitely looking like a one seed as they go up for nothing over the East High Blades. And right now, the East High Blades looking like they need to go to a sharpener. Control back to Foothill. Amazing footwork inside before it's taken away. And that's going to be offsides. Control to Foothill. Or control to East High, I should say. Must have gotten a little physical. On that contact, so now we have a pass by the captain. All the way to the top of the box, and Foothill kicks it right back out across center midfield. And East High will lose control off the leg of number three, Francisco Rios, the junior defenseman. Center midfielder attacking and lose control. Foothill back. Gains, regains control after East High had it shortly. Amazing passing by the Foothill Trojans. Definitely doing a fantastic job of controlling the ball. And now they get a pass all the way to the top of the box. Defended very well. Oh, and now a header pass inside the box. Great play by the goalkeeper coming up just in time. Across midfield, and that'll be controlled to East High. 17.05 remaining to play. Kenny Calvin and Julian Wilson in this first period. We want to say thank you to Stan Green and the current high school district superintendency for allowing us to put on events like this for our community. You know, I had a great opportunity to broadcast the SYC championships with Stan and the team last week, and that was an amazing week of action. Boiled down to a, uh, an astonishing championship and a surprise by Garces Rams. I want to apologize to the Rams as the shot goes into the top of the penalty box. Because I was calling the Rams, the Warriors, for the first quarter because I watched the Tehachapi game versus the girls first. But now, back to action. Pass inside the box. Inside the box and out of the box. Back to East High. But, yeah, amazing week of action up at North High. We missed you, Dr. J. Everybody was asking about you, and I told them you're in Florida being a superstar director that you are. <laughs> well, hey, I missed everyone too, man. I tell you what. Uh, but amazing trip. Yeah, so if you weren't listening, Dr. J had an opportunity to fly to Florida to present his film on the Tuskegee Airmen. Such a mon monumental opportunity. And what makes it even more special is that it's Black History Month and you're getting to be part of history. I salute you, my brother. 
hey, there's more to come and there's more to do. Always. Well, call me up so I can do some with you. <laughs> Foothill <laughs> will throw in from about the 30-yard mark if this was football. But this is not. This is soccer, Kenny. So we're going to stick to soccer lingo as it's passed out to the right winger. Controls it. Defended very well by East High, and that'll be control to Foothill. And they'll have a nice angle to see if they can get a nice play going from the sideline. One thing you haven't seen from Foothill is much substitution. They've been pretty fluent with this lineup that they have out there. And now East High get regaining control, and they have a nice opportunity with a two-on-one ahead. And now with an opportunity at the top of the box. Oh, when we get a stoppage in play. Oh, and no, they didn't stop it. They're going to say that's incidental contact, and the feet got tangled up. And Foothill regains control. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Tyrell Rose probably thought different. Nonetheless, control back to Foothill. Nice pass to himself. <laughs> Shea Clayton with some amazing footwork, and the try is no good and defended very well. 13.55 remaining to play in this first period. Foothill will have an opportunity from the corner to go into the box. And they've done very well with free kick opportunities and passing opportunities from the sideline. We'll see how this one goes. Action is happening. Oh, and off the shoulder of East High. East High, they're a 13 seed. They probably felt like, hey, we made it this far, guys. Let's see what we can give and try to give it our best shot. Not sure if this is their best shot so far because they haven't had too many opportunities. But now the ball's kicked in and caught. Great block attempt or blocked by the goalkeeper. And that'll be kicked out and controlled by Foothill and then off of East. Relinquishing control back to Foothill. So we talk about our sponsors. Valley Strong Credit Union. I woke up to a brand new logo on my app as the attempt goes into the penalty area and out of bounds. Nice, strong, green symbol for the Valley Strong Credit Union, one of our premier sponsors. Motor City GMC Lexus, Bakersfield College. And I got to let my man Yuri know that you guys have finally uploaded or updated the BC logo because he was a little bit worried, thinking that we still had the old Renegade. So I'll be sure to let him know that the BC logo has been updated for our current high network broadcast when I go back to campus. Foothill getting it back to the center back, and now control to the goalkeeper. And they're looking to just go in cruise control in this first period as they lead 4 to nothing with 11.52 remaining to play in the first. You know, Kenny, with the way Foothill's playing, it's going to be extremely difficult, not impossible, but extremely difficult for East High to score five goals against these guys. Uh, it, it's unbelievable that they've scored four. Oh, I agree, but as you say that, an amazing move and probably the best move of the game comes from an East High blade, but they just aren't getting the attempts. Just like you said, you worked so hard to, to create some space get into a position to pass to make a makeable shot attempt or try attempt, and Foothills is right back in your face. Yes. Well, for all you East High fans out there, like I said, it is not impossible, but, boy, it is going to be an uphill battle for sure. Absolutely. Nice pass inside the penalty area, and that will be out off of East High. And I'm sure our man Miguel is rooting for his East High Blaze. He's a former East High Blade. Shout out to Miguel and Javier and everybody else. He Miss should, Deanna Ribbons. He should be out here. He should be out here. He might be out here somewhere. 10.38 to play, and now I'm starting to smell the charcoal smoke. 
Who's going to bring me and Dr. J some dinner? Control to East High. And they get it across. And that's going to be controlled by the center back. And now up to the center midfielder. Doing an amazing job with footwork. And, boy, I tell you, I was always impressed with the footwork of some of my soccer friends and how well they can control the ball and get it where they want it to go as that try goes into the penalty area and controlled by the goalkeeper. But just amazing talent and skills from the athletes out here. We're seeing some fantastic footwork. Oh, my goodness. Control to East High, and that's going to be out, relinquishing control to Foothill High. But that time there, you had Aaron Fabella wiggling so much, he almost wiggled his own shoe off and, and lost his footing. Oh, nice header by the left winger. <laughs> and that's going to be offsides and a free kick opportunity. And the last time, Andres Mesa made a pass from this angle. It resulted in a nice goal. And now he has some action. And oh, amazing pass, but the header too high. And just like I said, Andres Mesa with the pass, it looked like he dropped. It looked like he took a three-step drop and threw a slant <laughs> to a wide-open receiver that just couldn't make the play. Okay, Kenny, it's not football. Oh, no, I know. I, mean, I, I got to shake it some kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> Control back out to the center back, to the right fullback who gets it across and up the field to the midfield attacker who loses control, and now it's going to be back to Foothill. And just the effort and intensity that you see from the black jerseys out there, it's usually – it's usually three black jerseys to one white jersey around the ball that I'm seeing right now. And that's just from a film perspective, even if you're not a huge soccer fan, it just tells you that one team is giving more energy and effort than the other team at this point. And that's why you have a four to nothing lead, which may be insurmountable, as Mr. Wilson just stated. Yeah, and you get, we're talking about East, and East is a very good team. Absolutely. I have some East High Blade family members under my roof. My little sister, Lakeba Carter, she's an East High Blade graduate. Mm -hmm. Much love for the East High Blades. Shout out to the greatest East High Blade of them all, my man J.R. Sakurugi, a.k.a. J.R. Henderson, just gained his 9,000th rebound in international basketball play for, for Japan. He's still playing? And he's still playing. How old is Mr. Henderson? Mr. Henderson will be 44 because we're the same age. Wow. 43, 44. I can't remember exactly when his birthday is. Still playing at a high level. Well, he'll have to come back and tell us that story. Can't wait. East High controls it. Getting it up to the – center back who gets it up the field to the left fullback or the left winger I should say and he's chasing it out and that's going to be out in control to Foothill High School yeah I got a lot of love for the East High Blades I was almost a blade being a Compton Junior High School student but greatness called and I ended up across town in driller land Kicked out of bounds by the center back of East or Foothill. That's going to be control East High at, at midfield. At center midfield, I should say. Thrown in and controlled. Nice battle for action between both teams. But control will go to Foothill, and they're doing a fantastic job of controlling the ball after they get possession. 
and getting it to this man who's been a dangerous left winger. And look at that give and go right there. Nice defense by number 12, Louis Duran. Oh, and that was huge contact. Nice tackle. And now we got one-on-one -on -one action at midfield in the pass. Oh, oh. East High controls it. And then we have a stop in play, and that's going to be controlled at Foothill. A confused East High Blade is wondering what's going on. But apparently, offsides in control of Foothill. 4.48 to play, an amazing first period, four amazing goals. And Foothill showing me why they're a one seed. Kicked all the way to center midfield and across center field. Oh, and the header back. And kicked out of bounds by East High. Control to Foothill, giving East High an opportunity to set up their defense. And this has been a dangerous area of the field where Foothill has executed perfectly from the left side. We'll see where this pass will go. And it's thrown in to the penalty area and off the head. And that was a nice passing attempt once again. But just a great job by the goalkeeper being in the right place at the right time. And that'll go back out to center midfield. And that'll be controlled by East High. East trying to do their best to get a goal before the end of the first period. And now passed into the top of the box. And, no, we have a try opportunity. Passed in. Oh, and the try is wide and looping left. The best scoring opportunity of the night for East High comes up empty. 3.20 remaining to play. And fans, if you have not watched a soccer game in a while, at the two-minute mark, the clock stops and time will be kept on the field. So I just want to give you guys that warning. Nice body positioning by Diego Murillo before East High loses control. And this is a classic rivalry battle. Foothill and East High geographically are two of the closest high schools in town. And so you got to know that the majority of these kids have played against each other their whole lives, whether in junior high or club. So it's a great opportunity for them to have the experience of playing each other in a meaningful contest as that try goes in and is controlled by the goalkeeper. You know, even just being here at South High, I joke about some of my South High Rebel friends who never were able to get over the hump and beat us in competition, but it was always a fun contest. You know, just having an opportunity to compete against the guys who you've competed against you know, your whole childhood. And some of these guys are seniors. This will be their last game playing. So hopefully for East High, they can do a better job in the second half and get some goals scored on the board. And now we're under that two-minute mark, and time will stop on the clock and be kept on the field. I am Kenny Calvin, joined by Dr. Julian Wilson. We are on the Kern High Network. Sponsored by Valley Strong Credit Union, Motor City GMC Lexus, and the Palace on Panorama. The place that made me great. <laughs> Bakersfield College. We are BC. Now, I said that one time, and somebody said, man, Kenny, you was great at BHS. I said, no, I wasn't. Y'all just thought I was. When I got up there and I really started being coached and found out that I had five more gears to give, that's when I knew I was great. <laughs> well, we're definitely getting some great play this evening, that's for sure. Fantastic play this evening. You know, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with all of the athletes. You know, you, you, some, some, we have our favorite sports as fans. How you doing, sir? We, we have our favorite sports as fans, but I would be remiss to tell you that I haven't enjoyed doing soccer, doing basketball, 
in all the other sports that I get the chance to commentate and broadcast. And sorry for the silence, guys. I'm currently helping one of our staff members get a copy of these rosters. This is Foothills, and this is East High. Currently, Foothill up 4 nothing. I will give you the time, but the time is being kept on the field. I will say there's probably about 10 seconds left as that shot goes looping right, as that try goes looping right, I should say. They're only called shots when they go in. East High with a golden opportunity to get a score at the end of the first period with this corner kick. Nice kick inside the penalty area. Oh, and a high shot, and that's going to be good if it was football, but this is soccer, and that's going to be a little bit too high. So East High comes up empty, and Foothill will have the free kick opportunity. And that will do it for the first half of action. I am Kenny Calvin and Dr. Julian Wilson. We'll take a break and give our sponsors some airtime and be back with second half action right after this. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. A lot of more uh, hands-on activity, a lot more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put it together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Let's pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art. It really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. 
it's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the current high school district like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the current high school district. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people on my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Plourd since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. Shearing my lamb for fair. I have two lambs. <laughs> Taking care of animals is you feed them twice a day, make sure they have water, walk them, make sure they're ready for fair. Vet science is the first year before you can actually go into animal science, and it's a lot of like hands on with the different animals, and you get to learn different things such as giving shots, castrating, all that fun stuff. For me, wanting to be a vet when I'm older, it helped prepares me. All the stuff that I'm learning in ag is definitely going to help me. I'm in ag communications. Anything that you see on the Facebook page is what we do, and pictures, and we do all the posters that are around campus, anything that just promotes ag. Our students are all part of the FFA organization, and through that, we have a chapter officer team. We do monthly chapter meetings because we're trying to get them involved outside of class they can find something that they're interested in and they need something that's going to hook them so that they're ready for life after high school. In animal care, the students learn a variety of things, whether it's tools or terms in the veterinary field. They learn about the skeletal systems, the animal nutrition, the housing, how to properly care for them. They also have the opportunity in the spring to actually go work at a veterinary hospital or at an animal shelter or a grooming and salon. Animal restraint, weight and temperature, pulse, respiration, all of that I learned here. They take a state certified test, and if they pass, they become a certified vet assistant right out of high school. It's always hands-on, and so I think that's what really helps us is that we're not just getting it from a textbook, we're actually doing these things, and we're actually practicing these things that we'll be doing in our future careers. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your project. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. 
I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had a chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And it is four to nothing. Foothill Trojans over the East High Blades in this CIF Central section round of action. Kenny Calvin and Julian Wilson. And we got fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the South. This game being played on a neutral field at South High. We want to thank the South High School Administration, Principal, Principal Connie Grumling, and the rest of her staff for allowing us to use this great facility for tonight's action. East High will have control. Definitely looking to have a better second half. And right away they lose control to Foothill before regaining it. Over to the left fullback. <laughs> nice moves by Jose Morales, and they get it all the way up across to the box and controlled by the goalkeeper, and at least they got action towards their box in their first possession. That's a good sign. Left winger for Foothill regaining control and getting it up across center field before East High reestablished control. Up to the center back. Center back trying to get it up to the striker, and that's picked off. And now Foothill regaining control, and now it's a foot race. Control by Foothill. And we talked about intensity early in the first half. At the beginning of the game, the first three minutes, we got our first goal. And from that point on, the intensity level was clearly in Foothill's favor. East High had some sparing moments, but hasn't had quality shot attempts inside the box. And Foothill themselves have had some amazing attempts on their end of the field. So... You know, I could assume that the conversation on the East High Blades sideline was, hey, we have to find a way to establish control and gain momentum by getting quality shots inside the box. They start the first possession with getting a pass all the way to the top of the box, and now we're back on Foothills end of the field where the first half of the game was basically spent entirely. Control back to East High. Kicked all the way over to the left winger. Jose Morales getting it up the left sideline. And this is a, the most threatening action they've had in a long time. Pass back up to the left fullback. Now passed inside to the striker. Oh, and we have contact. What will the call be? Control to Foothill. Center back leaves it for the goalkeeper who's going to go ahead and get that free kick attempt. And that's going all the way out to center field. And control will be established by the Trojans. Oh, and now we have a foot race. Oh, and we have a try in this block. The main, oh, and it drops in and goal for East High. Is that a goal? I guess not. It looked like goal East High, and that is a goal for East High. 
They had we had a little bit of confusion there as the East High player came out with the ball, but we have our first goal for East High, and right away they're listening to me, Dr. J. <laughs> Get some quality shots. <laughs> you got to shoot. You got to shoot. Shoot, I might come out of retirement and coach soccer. Oh, and Foothill right back at him with the, with the try to the penalty area. But great job by East High doing exactly what I said. They must be tuned in to the current high network. Well, you know, just like we talked about earlier, East High is a great team. And so they went in at halftime. They found a way to score right in, right off the bat. If you know anything about a kid from the East High, from the East Side in Bakersfield, California, you know they're tough. And the Blades, showing some resiliency, come out and get their first goal on an amazing shot that was partially blocked and bounced in and trickled in. So right away you see the energy level of East High raising. And they've had some interesting games on their way to this matchup with Foothill because they've been the underdog in every game. And right now they're the extreme underdog mm -hmm. trailing three goals. Again, not impossible. Not impossible. Ball kicked out to center field. Oh, and that's going to be controlled by East High. Getting it out to the striker, number five, Miguel Vallegas. Control back to Foothill. Kicked out of bounds by the right winger. Number 14, Aaron Fabela. Huge boot across center field. Shot into the box. Controlled by the goalkeeper. Nice attempt on the long try. Will be free kicked out to center field. And that's going to be controlled by the center back or, or the, the midfield attacker, I should say. And up to the – oh, and now we have a free kick opportunity and a push. Oh, we got a push. We got our first push of some action by Jose Gaetan getting a little physical out there. <laughs> Jose Gaetan, captain. And now we have the pass inside. Oh, and that was a straight try, and that was caught and blocked by the goalkeeper. Control the foothill. Good shot. Great shot, though. Another shot, though, just like we said. Have to get more quality shot opportunities. And now you have a foot race. And that's going to be kicked out. Control the foothill. Oh, and they're going to give control to East High. East High Blades trailing four to one. Foothill came out smoking three goals within the first ten minutes. East High doing their best impersonation of that momentum in the second half, getting the goal quickly, and now attacking the best they've attacked all game in the last five minutes. Pass upfield, and that's going to be intercepted and kicked up to the striker for East High. Oh, oh, and we got our first. I was about to say our first stoppage due to injury, but apparently his flop was not recognized. East High. Pass to the top of the box. Kicked out and controlled by Foothill. By the midfield attacker and now to the left winger. Nice footwork. That center midfield. Oh, and great job by Julio Luna. The sophomore striker. 
Doesn't appear to be playing striker right now. He appears to be playing. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? We'll find that position and locate him shortly. Ball placed at center field. Control over the foothill. Nice battle on the left sideline. And that's controlled by the fullback. Now out to the midfield, center midfielder. The roar of the Foothill crowd somewhat dissipated by the goal of East High. Nice defense inside the box by the East High Blaze, and that'll be kicked out. Thirty minutes of action remaining. Foothill clinging to a four to one lead with control. Nice footwork by Jose Gaitan before losing it. And that's going to be off of East High, control the foothill. Once again, we want to thank our sponsors at Valley Strong Credit Union, Motor City GMC Lexus, and Beckerfield College. And make sure and let my sports communication director, Brandon Urey, know that the BC logo has been updated by Kern High Network. Brandon's a stickler for details. Got to have the details correct for Brandon Yeary. So we want to thank Stan Green and all the staff, Javier, Miguel, Miss Ribbons, Kevin Willie, our other producer director, my pr producer director tonight, Dr. Julian Wilson, and all of my other co-broadcasters. Give me a call. Let's do lunch. You know, you keep mentioning food, man. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. I didn't have cash when I came, so I couldn't get my usual goodie from the snack bar. 28-35 remaining to play. Current High Network broadcast. We want to thank the Achieve Magazine for highlighting the athletes' accomplishments and giving them a way to look fancier than we did in the 90s. Oh, I'm still jealous. <laughs> this guy's got all the... Bells and whistles. You got TV, live streaming, magazines. And all we had was the newspaper. Ball out across center field. Nice speed on the left side by Miguel Vallegas. Oh, an amazing defense by Foothill after a great effort by Vallegas. And that's kicked over center field, and that's going to be out, control back to east high. And Foothill doing their best just to keep them at bay, how they came out smoking in the second half, being the east high blades. Yeah, Kenny, I'm going to tell you something, man. I've watched a lot of soccer, a lot of soccer. But this is the first time I think I've, in my life I've ever felt sorry for the ball because they are <laughs> kicking it. They are kicking it, kicking it, kicking it. That is hilarious because they are blasting that thing. <laughs> and I got to tell you, these fans are active. I'm having a blast listening to them in the microphone as we get the shot from the left winger, and that's going to go off a foothill defender back to the goalkeeper. And, you know, you see you see, East High came out smoking with that momentum. Foothill's done a great job to submerge that high-level intensity that East High came out with in the second period. Yes, indeed. You know, because they came out smoking and had about three to five shots in that first three to five minutes. And since then, it's been kind of back-and-forth action. But ultimately, great defense by Foothill. 
One thing will be interesting to see is if they'll try to pick up the pace themselves and, and score or just play the game of keep away and kicking it out of bounds like they did right there. Right. Because right there, that was, a, that was a situation where in the first half we would have saw them try to control that ball to get a shot opportunity. Yeah, Foothill's not attacking like they did in the first period. I mean, it's, uh, it's more like they're protecting. Yes. And that can work against you as well if you start yeah. playing prevent a little bit too early. There goes that football talk again. But, you know, we, we just, you know, we, I'm, I'm from a team that if we up 4-1, we're trying to go up 8-1. That's just who we are. That's right. You know I mean? And now you got to try into the penalty area, and that's going to be blocked. But, you know, it's, it's, it's what we call, you know, the killer instinct before the Mamba mentality. You that's know right. what I mean? That's right. We we were we were te- we were a team that want to put fifty up on you if we got thirty in the second half already. Okay, guys, what do you mean we need to make sixty? I'm sure these guys want to do the same thing. We shall see. Kicked out and control will go back to the Foothill Trojans. You know, so I made a little fun about the Foothill Trojans. I'll talk about some of the highlights of the Foothill lore. So I grew up. Uh, I had cousins that played basketball for the first or the 1988 state champion Foothill Trojans. My cousin Robert Roberson was a guard on that team. An amazing team. My cousin Dion Glinton, who's no longer with us, was a senior center on that amazing Foothill team. A lot of amazing things from one of the smallest schools in the state of California, Foothill High School, and they're looking to capitalize on that with this Mm. lead that they have over East High. You know, so I gave I gave East High some kudos. Let me let me tell you some East High stories of us demolishing them. Yes, please do. I can't wait to hear it. 70 to 6. <laughs> my junior year versus East High. And 70 to 3 my senior year in East High football. Well, we used to smack those boys around. Well, did, didn't they have, like, canceled <laughs> default after so many points? I no, mean, no, no, we used to have them running clock, but our fourth string would still be putting it up. Wow. We, we used to put up a show against East High Blaze, referring to my drillers <laughs> on the gridiron. You know, I gave y'all y'all love earlier, East High. I had to let them know it was real on the second half. But they gave us the blues in basketball on the way to building that beautiful gym that they have up on Mount Vernon. Shout out to all the staff at East High. One of the greats, Milt Henderson, still working over there. Mike, former uh, DB coach and uh, co-broadcaster, Rick Van Horn, still on the staff over there at East High. Heard they had a great Hall of Fame ceremony there. Terry Manoy, Terrence Manoy, one of the East High great basketball players and football players was – Enshrined in the East High Hall of Fame. Huge kudos to all of our Kern County All-Stars, as my great broadcast partner, Francis Mayer, always calls us. You know, if you played sports in Kern County at a high level, you are a Kern County All-Star. Control out to the left. Looping shot inside the box. And that's going to be controlled back to Foothill. We're going to get back to talking soccer action with 22 minutes left to play. Be a free kick from the goalie. Well, you can clearly see where the intensity is now. You see what part of the field we're spending our time on now. Absolutely. You see East High pressing, of course. And it goes back to what you alluded to earlier, Dr. J, is the fact that Foothill is focusing more on being defensive than striking like they have earlier based on the fact that they have this 3-1 lead. And as you see right there, you have a attacking middle backer for East High with an opportunity to get a quality shot, and the shot loops all the way right. And it, and it goes back to the point that I alluded to with just not getting quality shot attempts when you have the right positioning. You know, because right there at the center in the top of the box, that's one of the most optimal places to either pass for a give and go, pass and cut just like basketball. But, you know, it's just a lack of execution on East High's part. 
And that's going to be controlled back to East High. Well, I know East High is keeping check on the clock, and if they look at the clock now, they have time. Yeah, you definitely have time. They have time. 21 minutes remaining to play. Foothill up 4-1. to one. This is Kenny Calvin and Dr. Julian Wilson here on Kern High Network. We want to thank Valley Strong Credit Union, Motor City GMC Lexus, and the Harvard on the Hill, the Mansion on the Mountain, the place that Stan Green built, Bakersfield College. He hates when I say that. Like, hey, man, you were the quarterback of the 1988 national champions. Who else can say that that's alive? <laughs> that's right. Nobody. No All right. One. Hey, that means you the man. Nice job by Foothill controlling action. Center midfielder Albert Jimenez doing a fantastic job with footwork and now to get it up to the left winger and here's where they can be deadly from that left wing they've scored the majority of their goals from the left wing and now they pass inside to the top of the box defended very well but here's that stress level for east high because now you have foothill in that dangerous scoring position they've scored the majority of their goals from the left side now as they're attacking the south end they are in that attack position, and as you see, East High struggles to get control back once they're in this range because they have such a great way of executing passes, and now another pass inside the box. But yet you see Foothill still having the opportunity to control action and control the ball as they come to the right side, and now they have numbers, and the shot is high. Oh, off the hand of the goalkeeper as it loops left. The try is unsuccessful. Amazing block. As the goalkeeper showing us his vertical. Gets up to deflect it. But here's another deadly opportunity with 19 minutes to play. And now we get a, a substitution for Foothill. And that's Andres Meza. He had an amazing first half. And now the ball's in. Shot's in. Ball still outside of the box area. Foothill has numbers. They get the header inside, close to the penalty area. Defended very well and outside the box. And Foothill will have sideline control once again. And let's see if we see that play that we saw earlier. They get it into the center midfielder. Looks like that's Altamirano. Altamirano, I should say. Nice control inside by both Foothill and East High. Just the footwork that's on display and the ball handling as well has been fantastic as East High Regains control and gets it back out across center field. Passed inside. Now we have a kicked all the way over to the left winger. He, he cannot regain control. Great attempt by Jose Morales to secure control on the left side. Amazing move. And shot inside. Jose Gaetan. Looked like he was held a bit, and he'll have the free kick opportunity. And now for East High, this will be an opportunistic point for them as they get the nice free kick attempt from the left wing. And this left wing has been lucky in 4-2 with 17 minutes to play. Looks a lot better than 4-1 and a lot more realistic with the opportunity to come back. So we have Julio Luna, the captain. Set up for the free kick. Passed inside. Headed away. Defended very well by Foothill. And so now we'll have a corner kick opportunity. We heard some scores while you were away, Dr. J, earlier. We heard Highland was up 2-0. Looking to get to the Valley Championships. It's East High passes it in. Oh, they had a nice opportunity. Just missed it. 
And now it's blasted out. Wow, amazing pass from East High and just could not get the finish. Another blown opportunity inside the box. You can't get any closer than that. Can't get any closer than that. Definitely was an amazing pass. Just tough timing. And the time is ticking. 15.56 remaining to play in the game. Foothill up with a commanding lead of 4-1, but East High doing their best job to try to get some kind of action going on this end of the field. <clears throat> Corner throw in is caught by the goalkeeper, and that'll be a free kick out across to midfield. Oh, headed. Oh, and now we got action from the striker. One-on-one -on -one opportunity, and the shot is in, and it's good. Foothill, amazing shot from the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and I believe it was Aaron Fabella. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Aaron Fabella with the lightning speed. Gets the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, makes one miss, and booyah! Foothill Trojans with the 5-1 lead. Wow. Unreal. Wow. Amazing shot. Can't wait to see that replay. So any momentum you thought you had if you're east if your east high has just been sucked out of the 933. 07 zip code. And here comes the fans. <laughs> they were pretty quiet after that last goal by East High, but now they've awoken. Yeah, that was like a nail, literally. Yes, indeed. I would say, and now, as they get another pass to the top of the box, that could definitely well be the nail in the coffin with 1350 remaining to play. Because that was an amazing goal. It's actually one on two, and now you got to pass inside, defend it very well. As East High gets it across center midfield. Wow, but how about the resiliency of Foothill? Battled their way back, had some great defense on the inside with some quality scoring opportunities from East High. Gets the blast of a kick from the goalkeeper all the way to center midfield that's controlled by our man, Aaron Fabella. And Aaron Fabella gets the one-on-two opportunity and scores the goal from about 20 yards out. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the Foothill fans. Gotta love the Foothill fans. <laughs> Pass inside. And that's going to be out of the box. Oh, and now that intensity level is being shown very well as Foothill with the threatening attempt. And will we get a try? Pass inside. Controlled by East High. And that's going to be off East. They cannot catch a break. Any team with a crowd and fan base like that, that's a student and parent section. Oh, absolutely. You're they, probably going to be – it's going to be tough to beat them. They wow. definitely brought the energy that their team needed. And now you're getting some more subs. And some of these guys may be subbed for the remainder of the game as they've been out there all game. You got number 11, Alta Morano, number 14, Aaron Fabella, who just scored the last goal, and number 10 – Andres Meza, who's been out there putting in work. He has a goal earlier. But definitely, Foothill's showing you why they're the number one seed. And they're like, hey, our basketball team won the state last year. I guess it's our turn to win state for the school this year. And they definitely looking like a state championship contender. And this will set up a classic battle if Highland can pull it off. 
we'll have another east side battle as Foothill faces off with Highland for the Valley Championship. Now, East High. Not giving up, continuing to play strong. Out at the top of the box, we got a shot, and that's going to be looping left. The try is unsuccessful. Ten forty four remaining to play. It is East High versus the number one seed, Foothill Trojans. Foothill leading five to one. We are playing the game at a neutral site, South High, due to the current situation at Foothill where they are working on their new football field and soccer field and campus as a whole. And you know I have to give it to Foothill for their play and achieving the number one seed. I mean, to not have a home field to play on. Absolutely. They've done a tremendous job. Well, it's definitely been a fantastic outing from them. They've done a great job from start to near finish with 9.50 remaining to play. You know, getting three goals within the first 10 minutes. And then coming back and answering East High's lone goal in the second half with an amazing one-on-one -on -one shot. It, that's what it was. It was a shot. <laughs> Kenny, did you bring that crowd with you? Man, you know I keep them with me, man. This crowd is going wild. They have not relinquished one second. You know, it goes to show. Foothill's done a fantastic job as a an administration. You know, being an uh, administrator for a girls' group home in the East area, I've had a lot of my girls attend Foothill High, and the campus did a fantastic job with them as students. And, and you can tell how it's resonating with these athletes and why they're playing at a high level and why they have such fan support. So great job by Foothill's staff. Oh, and a huge... Oh, a huge tackle and no call. Now the Boo Birds are coming out. Coaches are going wild because we have a huge push. I'm sure our viewers saw that. And the crowd is going wild. You know, it's 820 remaining to play. East High is trailing four goals. And that was our first hugely dirty play <laughs> that was missed. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'm trying to come up with the right words to say it was su it was such a wide open, well, you blatant can't, you, play. You can't come with the right words. Everybody <laughs> saw that. Yeah, that was that was as as blatant as it can get in wide open field. <laughs> and now the Foothill fans who were already turned up, they turned it up another notch. Free kick in the inside. Will they score the goal? No, it will be blocked. Try will be unsuccessful and controlled the East High. Across center field, control will go back to Foothill. Now East doing their best to get it across center midfield, and he's attacking and moving with some speed. Nice pass inside. Nice give and go. Oh, but he couldn't get there. Nice attempt as Julio Luna tried to give the – Give and go, but amazing move. You see that spin move in attempt. Wow. Amazing footwork on the right side. Now it's controlled by the fullback, and he gets it back inside to the attacking middle backer, and that's going to be controlled and kicked out of bounds by Foothill High School with 648 remaining to play. Oh, and it's not out. It's just a dead ball. So now we have Foothill with control. Foothill getting it out across center midfield, and now you have the ever so dangerous left winger.
kick up to the striker and now control back to Foothill. Going back to the center back of East High, getting it out to the left full back. And that's controlled by Jose Morales before it's kicked out of bounds. Hmm. Oh, and we got a little contact. that, <laughs> And it seems a little light compared to the contact that was missed down here. <laughs> We're going to keep that to ourselves. As East High gets the free kick, we'll have Julio Luna along with the left fullback, Jose Morales. Nice pass and attempt, but just like we talked about, East High not able to come up with the attempts inside the box. They're getting there. They're getting the ball there, but they're not executing like they need to, and now they still trail 5-1 to one with 5-18 remaining to play on this Kern High Network broadcast live from South High School with Kenny Calvin and Dr. Julian Wilson. Uh oh and another one-on-one -on -one opportunity with – And the Foothill saying that <laughs> goalkeeper possibly came out of the box. And things are getting very physical right now. We do have a stoppage of play. Finally, the officials have decided to earn their paycheck and call something. Yeah, the officials <laughs> need to regroup. We just had two more <laughs> collisions. <laughs> oh. And, you know, and it's definitely important, you know, as, as the game goes by, they're probably – as officials saying, oh, well, the game's in hand. We don't have to call as much. You have to continue to call the game as if it's 0-0 because this is what can happen. Injury. That's right. And for sure, for certain, East High has not decided to lay down. It's getting tight on time, but they did not lay down. They definitely have not laid down. So what we're going to do, we have an injured player on the field. We'll take a quick break and start thinking about who we're going to give our player of the game to as time continues to wind here on the Kern High Network. We are these fields. We are these roots. We see the beauty in the everyday with pride from where we came. We look ahead to the places that pull us together, to the places that we call home. A new chapter begins now. Kern Schools Federal Credit Union is now Valley Strong Credit Union. Grow your possibilities. Visit valleystrong.com slash grow to learn more. Professional grade at Motor City goes beyond a deal. Our cars, trucks, and SUVs make Motor City a virtual tech center for safety and communication that helps save lives. Technology that alerts you to possible... All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The injured East High Blade will get that number for you. It appears to be... A single-digit number, but live game action is back. 225 remaining to play. And as we stated earlier, under two minutes, all time will be kept on the field. Foothill up 5-1. to one. And so, with the last two minutes coming upon us, we're going to go ahead and start thinking about who our player of the game is has the potential to be. And I just told Dr. Julian Wilson, the most active player that I've seen in the second half for Foothill was Mr. Aaron Fabella. And, folks, I'll have you know I disagreed. Who'd you go with? I'm going with the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah, the crowd definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the, de the crowd definitely deserves a T-shirt. So with time being kept on the field, I definitely want to thank all of our sponsors, the Achieve Magazine, 
Valley Strong Credit Union, Motor City GMC Lexus, and the Palace on Panorama, Bakersfield College. Special shout-out to President Christian and Sandy Taylor of Bakersfield College, athletic director, and our new head coach, my cousin, Todd Littlejohn. Welcome home, Todd. Last but not least, we want to thank Principal Connie Grumling and her administration for accommodating the Kern High Network's broadcast tonight. Also, a special thank you to Stan Green and the Kern High School District Superintendency for allowing us to put on events like this for the community. Foothill is partying, ladies and gentlemen. Their fans came out in droves, and they are having a blast. <laughs> gotcha. hey. I've never seen it like this. This is the funniest crowd I've seen all season. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foothill up five to one. I would say there's probably 20 seconds left in this central section battle. I am Kenny Calvin and Dr. Julian Wilson here at South High. The house that Troy Ochoa built. Well, somebody's going to say, well, hey, didn't Brent McClanahan go here? Yes, the house that Brent McClanahan built. Then I can say, hey, well, didn't a guy named Clayton T. Con Madden go here too? Yes, the house that <laughs> Clayton T. Con Madden built. We are here at South High. I want to thank everybody that tuned in to the broadcast. Stay tuned for more Kern High Network action. We have basketball coming up, more soccer action. Definitely going to be a great couple of weeks in the I, Central Valley. I want to stay for the singing. <laughs> I want to go where they're eating at afterward. <laughs> Man. <clears throat> oh, huge kick. And we have... Number three, Adam Bizad, who's up. The kick will go back to Foothill, but ladies and gentlemen, I do think we are under about 10 seconds of live game action after this free kick. And... Dr. J, I'm going to go ahead and stick with my commitment, our player of the game, and that is the whistle as Foothill comes away with the win. Our player of the game will be number 14, Aaron Fabella. So I'm going to run down and try to get a picture with the young man for the Kern High Network player of the game. But, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I am Kenny Calvin, and I've been joined with my producer-director, Mr. Julian Wilson, I want to thank everybody else. And I don't know where Foothill's going to be playing next week or week after, but we got to be there. Absolutely. They we got to be there. We, they may be playing Highland. They may be playing Lamore. Highland was up 2-0. Hopefully Highland stuck with it, and we can have a all-Bakersfield Valley Championship. But once again, this is Kenny Calvin here at the Current High Network, South High School. We'll catch you our next broadcast.